and we're on Jazz Street, day number eight of this year's Rochester International Jazz Festival. Our first interview of the day is with bassist and composer Ben Allison. Ben, welcome back to Rochester. Great to be here. Nice to see you, Derek. So you've been working on a project, and I'm so happy for you because we've been talking about it and talking about it, but now it's happening. What is that? So, um, well, first I should say the, the group is a trio that's been around for about 12 years. Saxophonist Ted Nash, uh, guitarist Steve Cardenas, and myself. We put this band together, drummerless trio, with the idea of having a, you know, musical conversations without drums. <laughs> Lots of room. Um, so for our fourth album, each album we've kind of devoted to the works of some, somebody who we admire, somebody whose music we love. The most recent album, called Tell the Birds I Said Hello, features uh, the music of Herbie Nichols. And not music that he actually recorded, but music that we, through our research, uncovered that he never recorded, that no one had ever heard before. So this is a chance to, to delve into it. Um, for some of your listeners may know that I've been a devotee of Herbie's music for some time. Um, so this was just a, a, a great find to get, to get a hold of these tunes, and we put it on a record. So for folks who may not know Herbie Nichols, how would you explain him and his music? <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't tr try to explain him. Um, for that, I would say go listen to his records. He made three uh, sides for Blue Note and one for Bethlehem Records. He died in 1963, so these are records that were made in the 50s, late 50s. Beautiful albums. Um, but, you know, he's one of these uh, composers and pianists who was basically obscure. I mean, he, he didn't really get um, a lot of opportunities to perform his own music. He languished in obscurity for, for quite a while. Um, fortunately, he, he did get to make these few records with some great side people of the time, Art Blakey and Al McGiven. <laughs> you know how it is. Um, but, but he didn't have a working band, so he didn't have musicians who got to live with his music over time, like some of his contemporaries, like Monk and people like that, um, how they did. So uh, our love of his music came about mostly th through our good friend Frank Kimbrough, fantastic pianist and composer, dear friend who recently passed away. But before he did, he brought Herbie's music to our attention, and we've been kind of investigating it ever since. This was in the early 90s we started diving into it. Speaking with Ben Allison, talk about Frank Hembro and his legacy. Yeah, it still hurts, man. <laughs> you know, he's, he's a, a dear friend, um, and, and we lost him um, in December 2020, not COVID-related. He died um, too young. But he and I, back in the early 90s, started an organization called the Jazz Composers Collective. Our idea was to, well, what, really what we were doing was we were getting together every week for a jam session. The price of admission was a new piece of music, something that no one had heard before, things that, that you were working on. And um, after about a year of that, uh, we felt the time was right to start to bring this music out of the basement and bring it out into the public. So we formed a nonprofit called the Jazz Composers Collective to foster new, new music. We commissioned music. We had an annual festival. We had a concert series that ran for 13 years. Um, we premiered over 300 new works. There were 250 musicians involved by the end. Uh, it was a, a really incredible creative outpouring. So that's Frank Kimbrough. Um, he's the kind of person who really was about wonderful music and encouraging people to do something new. Speaking with Ben Allison, so Ben, there's one thing, living and breathing this music, there's a whole other thing of performing it. What's it like to perform Herbie's music with an audience and with, with your crew? Yeah. Well, one of the things that we found with Herbie's music is um, because it was, first of all, his approach to writing and improvising is truly unique. I mean, he has a voice. That's like the hardest thing for a musician, is to find their own voice, to find a voice that's, um, I'm hearing Ornette Coleman in the background, another great example of somebody who had an original voice as an artist. And that's what we all aspire to, is to, is to find something that's, um, you know, we're all, we're, everything we do is built on everything we've ever heard, all the greats before us, but it's our job to find something, some new uh, amalgam of everything that we love and put it into a, a new form. And Herbie was a genius at that. He was a genius at that. So for us, playing his music is a celebration of that. But also, it's such fertile music for exploration that it's just a great um, kind of vehicle. You know, it just feels like uh, the kind of music that makes you want to improvise. Ben, thank you so much again for spending time with us. And thanks for uh, taking jazz further with your work.
man, thank you so much for what you do.